feminism is the radical notion that women are human, so most people I know are actually feminists, whether or not they admit it or not. And I think in, we see Jesus modeling this in so many ways. Jesus had a very high view of women. Uh, he treated women with respect and dignity. We see this from Mary Magdalene to Mary of Bethany, uh, to all the women he surrounded himself Martha, with Martha. Um, one of my favorite stories is the story of Mary of Bethany. Uh, because a lot of times people tell me, Rachel, what right do you have to speak? You're a woman, you don't have a PhD, you, you don't have the theological training. What right do you have to write about Christ, write about God, uh, write about the church? And I always think of Mary of Bethany, uh, who sat at Jesus' feet when he was teaching, which meant he was her rabbi. And that was a very radical thing for him to be doing. Uh, some of Jesus' contemporaries said it would be better for the Torah to be burned than to be taught to a woman. So when Jesus is described as teaching Mary as she sits at his feet, he was making a statement and she was making a statement that she has the same value as a man in this new kingdom. And, Cut. <laughs> and what I love is Jesus says to her when she's challenged on that by her own sister a little bit, uh, which Martha gets kind of a bad rap. She wasn't so bad, but she challenges Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're worried about so many things, but Mary has chosen the right path. And he says, and it cannot be taken away from her. So when women come to me and say, I feel a call to be a pastor, I feel a call to preach, to teach, to lead, but the people in my community are telling me I can't because I'm a woman. Uh, I look at them and I repeat those words of Jesus. You have chosen the right path and it cannot be taken away from you. Nobody can take away that call. Nobody when it's a Christ given call. Um, and I hope that's an encouragement to them because I know how hard it can be to have your credentials challenged, not because you haven't earned them, but because you're a woman. Um, when I was in high school, I was asked by my youth leader to give my personal testimony uh, in front of all my fellow high school students, which is a very evangelical thing to do. You know, you got to learn how to give the public testimony. And so I did. I gave my testimony in front of all my fellow high school students. But I'll never forget when I was finished giving the testimony, I sat down next to a guy I went to high school with. And he turned to me and he said, wow, Rachel, you're a really good preacher. Too bad you're a girl. And what he meant was, what a waste of a gift when um, women in my tradition were forbidden from teaching and leading. Uh, and I, it breaks my heart to think of how many women have been told that. Oh, you're gifted to teach and to lead and to um, illuminate scripture. Too bad you're a girl. And I'm so glad I didn't believe that lie. It was one of the first little red flags in my mind that said maybe Maybe this isn't the tradition for you. Maybe this isn't right. Um, yeah. I hear from women all the time who had similar experiences. I heard from, I've heard from women who got up to speak at a Christian conference and a row full of men stood up and walked away in protest. I've heard women in seminary who said when it was their turn in the preaching class to give the sermon, nobody showed up because it was all men in the class and her and only her professor showed up to hear her give the sermon. Well, we were in the Bible though, right? Like when Jesus came in when the woman was <laughs> preaching and he turned the tables over. Is that <laughs> that's that's something about money changers, oh, women. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating and crazy that, that women can feel so demeaned when Jesus has such a, a, a high view of them. And, when, and even in the Apostle Paul who gets kind of a bad rap, among a lot of people for not celebrating women, actually did celebrate women often. He had very high praise for Priscilla and Aquila, whose names, like a husband and wife whose names rhymed. I mean, how cool is that? He had high praise for Priscilla, who was a teacher, high praise for Junia, who he describes as an apostle, high praise for Phoebe and Lydia and all these other women who were clearly leading and teaching in the church. Um, so for people to say that the Apostle Paul forbade women from teaching and leading just isn't, that just isn't the case. We have him giving some instructions to the Ephesian church about not letting women seize complete authority, but we don't see, Jesus, we don't see him forbidding women from teaching and leading all the way around. It's, 
we, we see him celebrating them for doing it. So, yeah. As long as you get lower pay, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs>